As every new Minecraft update comes out, it seems like people are more and more excited to see what's been added to the game. But honestly, that's not really the case for me personally. I personally feel like with every update that comes out, the game loses a bit of its charm. Now I'm not saying Minecraft is a bad game, I still play it all the time. I'm just saying my nostalgia and my rose-colored glasses make me look at it in a different way. Back in 2012, after school, I would get on my Xbox 360 and play Minecraft with my friend Ryan. We would spend hundreds and probably even thousands of hours building amazing worlds and parkour maps and making jokes and taming animals and just hanging out and having a good time. Realistically, I think I look at it differently because life in general is a lot different now. You know, I'm an adult, I'm in college, I have responsibilities, life is freaking stressful, and I kind of miss the days where I could just get home from school, do my homework, and play Minecraft with no other worries in the world. And honestly, I've been a bit stressed out lately, so I wanted to re-experience this nostalgia and re-experience those old memories that Ryan and I had back on Minecraft Xbox 360 edition. So I decided that I was going to hop on my Xbox, plug in the old HD PVR2 that only records in 720p, and record myself playing through some of these old worlds and experiencing the memories once again. Before we continue on our adventure, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Cove. Cove is an amazing new audio brand with one of the coolest Bluetooth speakers I've ever seen, the Cove Commuter 2. This epic speaker is my new favorite, and that's mainly due to the fact that it splits in half. Yes, you heard that right. This one speaker can break into two pieces that play stereo music. No extra connections or anything like that. So let's say you're grilling out at your apartment complex with friends and you want everyone to hear what you're playing. Simply split it in two and now you basically have two speakers for the price of one. It gets extremely loud too, so you can use it in any environment. This bad boy can run up to seven hours on a single charge, is water resistant, and has a range of up to 30 feet. Plus, if you're interested, you could get up to 68% off your order by clicking the link in the description and using code ROBO68 at checkout. Trust me, you want to take advantage of this because you will not regret it. Thanks again to Ko for the sponsorship and let's get back to the video. So to start out, I decided to choose a random world from my list to log on and see what was happening. I chose the one called Legit World, which I guess was a survival world, and honestly I had no idea which one this was. I had quite a few worlds and this could have been any of the ones that we played on. And after loading in, I instantly remembered absolutely everything about this world. This one was a good one. So I spent the first few minutes walking around and kind of just getting a feel for my environment. This was back when we had a huge obsession with three things. Taming dogs, giant mushrooms, and of course, everyone's favorite, building a house on stilts. I don't ever know why we did this, because obviously, looking at our house, it wasn't the nicest, but who freaking cares? It was a lot of fun. As I walked around, I noticed an eerie, empty feeling, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I heard the constant whines of the dogs who have been sitting here for over eight years without any company whatsoever. No food, no pets, nothing. They're just sitting here, waiting for Ryan and I's return. As I walked around a bit more, I noticed something really interesting and something that I'm really glad existed. A timeline. Our first night in the world was spent all the way back in November of 2012, and then the next day we found our first diamond, and a few days later we made the first bookshelf. Once we made our enchantment table, we for some reason moved on with life and decided never to get on this world ever again. Walking into our house, it was divided into two sides. On the right was my side, TLG Scopes at the time, that was my name, and then across the way was Ryan's side. Both of the doors said do not enter. Now obviously I could enter my own house, but I'm going to respect Ryan's wishes and I'm going to avoid going inside of his. It seems like we had a decent amount of materials, nothing crazy, but we did have enchanted diamond tools and some armor and some basic resources, so we were in a pretty good position. Around the back, we set up a bit of a memorial service for someone named Dumbledog, which I think was our second dog, because our first dog is buried over here, and uh, his name was Dumbledork. Gotta love that edgy middle school humor. Throwing the word dork in a name? Oh my god, what a criminal. I looked around for our secret chest because it was almost guaranteed that we would have one, but I couldn't find it, and honestly in this entire video I couldn't find it, which is kind of disappointing. 
And at this point, I realized that our house was ugly, and my first project today was going to be improving the look of it without changing any of the major features. Think of it as a cosmetic overhaul instead of a complete redo. I want to keep the frame where I can keep the memories, but I want to make it look a little nicer. I determined I wanted to make it nicer by using brick accents. We built the pillars out of brick, and back in the day, Ryan and I were just so obsessed with brick, and I really don't know why. It just felt like a cool, unique, kind of rare block, and what better way to decorate our house than by using our old favorite block. So I went around and gathered some clay in order to smelt some bricks, threw them in the furnaces, and then started out by decorating the wall with the signs on it. This was probably the most important thing in the entire world, so I wanted to start with making it look nice. From here, I moved on to the stairs leading up to the house. Now, these things were absolutely hideous. We had like a weird cobblestone thing on the side with way too many torches, and it just didn't look right, so I figured I would start by changing this to stone brick. And then at one point, I needed more materials, so I had to look in Ryan's house, again, I'm sorry Ryan, in order to see if he had anything, and I was blown away by the memories. So I started out by seeing Ryan's dogs just patiently sitting there waiting for his return, like I said, and then I realized that this man like loaded up his house with item frames full of diamonds in them, which was kinda greedy bro, you know, we should share these diamonds, but I see how it is. Then we have the sign on the first diamond block made, it says the legendary beer diamond block, and that was because uh, at the time our clan name was beer, B33R, it was like a gun in Black Ops 2, so that was pretty cool to see. And then of course, all of Ryan's houses always had to have these refrigerators where you put the food in a dispenser and pull a lever, the door opens and it shoots food out at you. Like I said, if Ryan's house was missing one of these, then honestly it would be disappointing. So at this point, after changing out the cobblestone stairway leading up to the entrance, I realized that we also needed to change out the cobblestone accents on the house because it just didn't look right. So I went through and mined out the entire second floor along with the little accent pieces on the outside. Then I replaced them all with stone bricks, and honestly, it was starting to come together a little bit better. From here, I realized the balcony was pretty scuffed. That was definitely something that 11 or 12 year old me would have created, but I'm a better Minecrafter now, and I think I could definitely do a better job. So to start out, I added some little cobblestone wall pillars, and then went back up and finished the roof because it was bothering me that it was different from the middle section. And now was the moment when I realized that I was going to need a lot more bricks if I was going to be able to do what exactly I wanted to do. So I went on an adventure to gather some clay in order to make some more bricks. But once again, I was stopped along the way with an amazing memory that hit me all at once. We had this tree, and for some reason it didn't hit me at first until I eventually realized. This tree was one of the first places that we decided to live once we left the mainland. I vaguely remember one night, there was a lot of mobs around and we needed to sleep. So we built this little parkour thingy up into the tree, cleared out a platform, and set up a nice little overnight base. I remember it like it was yesterday, the crisp fall night right before we had to go to bed for school the next day, sitting in the tree looking out over the village that we probably just destroyed, and thinking, wow, this world sure is going to be a lot of fun. I remember going to bed in this tree and waking up the next day looking at an empty plot of land that would eventually become our house. And honestly, who knows what was going on at the time? Was I making good grades? Was I enjoying myself playing baseball? Did I have a girlfriend? Honestly, who knows? But anyways, enough time spent reminiscing. I need to get my clay where I could finish my project for this video. I started out by expanding the wall on the opposite side of the sign wall just because it looked kind of uneven with like a random ass thing on one side and then nothing on the other side. And then I moved on expanding up with brick accents all the way to the top of the building. As I was on the roof, I looked down and for some reason I didn't notice this until like halfway through this playthrough, but we had this entire platform dedicated to the first cake that we ever made. Back in the day, Ryan was obsessed with the cakes, and he always said the cake is a lie, which I believe is a Portal reference, so I assume he played Portal and was like, damn, this sure is cool, I'm gonna throw it as an easter egg in every Minecraft world I ever make. But I mean, the cake has still been sitting there this entire time. I mean, it's probably expired, it is 8 years old, but who knows, because food these days has so many preservatives in it. I went to bed, and the following day, I woke up to finish our balcony, finalizing it with nice brick accents. At this point, honestly, our house was looking pretty nice. 
I still needed to do the roof and I still needed to do the backside of it, but it's been about three hours at this point and honestly I really don't feel like gathering any more clay. So I went and did it anyways. I had quite a bit of clay and then I realized that I didn't have any coal to smelt it. So I went into this other building that I assume was a house for one of our other friends, maybe Ryan's cousin or one of my other friends from middle school. Obviously they didn't play very much, so I figured you know what, I would turn this into a nice little furnace room. But now it was time to go into the mines. Our strip mine was absolutely garbage. For some reason we decided to mine at bedrock level instead of going to level 11. <laughs> Absolute noobs, who would do that? But it was kind of cool because we lit up the way with netherrack, which is just so extra. Like, lighting up your mine shaft with netherrack instead of torches is kind of interesting, but I admit it looks kind of cool. I started out just by mining in this area just because it was what we did back in the day, so why not go back to some old traditions? And then I realized, oh yeah, nobody mines on this level because it's not very good. As I pulled out the map, the old way to check what level you were on, I realized that this map has been generated for so freaking long. I noticed that there was our house on the little peninsula along with the village above it, but that there was also some structures in the middle of the desert. I'm not too sure what those were, but they honestly caught my attention and I put it in the back of my mind to go over and check them out later. I went down into the cave and found some coal and even a bit of diamonds, and eventually I found an abandoned mineshaft. I explored this for a bit, found a decent amount of loot, and then eventually found three mob spawners. I got lost and as I was digging up, I dug into two mob spawners in the same area, which was kind of interesting. I don't remember ever seeing that before. At this point, we're about six hours into this recording, and I started to realize how fun this is. For some reason, like I said, I don't enjoy modern Minecraft as much as I enjoy this. I was actually motivated to hop back onto these worlds and play through them. But while playing normal Minecraft, that's not the case. I get a little bit bored, and eventually I'll close down a world, never to go back on it again. I don't know what it is about these old worlds that make them so special, but they hold a deep place in my heart, and honestly, I had a really good time playing on it. It's not over yet though, I have to add to the wall, and check out what those other buildings were. So throughout the process, I added a sign saying whenever we finish rebuilding the house, I mean, I finished rebuilding the front of the house, but uh, we're just gonna say we did the whole thing. But now, it was time to put our coal into the furnaces to smelt the bricks, and then go exploring. As I started walking around the world, I noticed two things. First of all, as they've updated this game from like 20 different versions from when the last time I played it was, it has gotten very freaking laggy. I don't know if the Xbox 360 just can't handle it or what the issue was, but chunk generation was like watching a PowerPoint. It was absolutely ridiculous. But after suffering through lots of frame lag, I eventually got to an abandoned village with some very interesting decorating choices. We built a stone tunnel between some of the houses and like connected all of the village houses into one, which was kind of interesting. So obviously we did live here at one point, but I think that was the only thing here because for some reason it was eerily quiet and I didn't see any motion or any life whatsoever. Then we went over to another village and it was the same thing. It was dead, empty, and desolate. And at this point, I'm gonna swing back around to what I said earlier. The world felt weird. It felt strange, almost like we were walking around the land of someone who died. And I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. But I started to realize that the world felt dead because of the lack of players. I didn't have Ryan to goof around with and make immature jokes about stupid things. Ryan now has a kid and is working a full-time job. He probably hasn't even thought about this world in years, and honestly, neither have I. I'm a full-time college student, working on YouTube and doing a bunch of other stuff. Our lives have moved on, but the world hasn't. Everything is exactly how we left it so long ago, and it's kind of neglected, just like every other world that's loaded up on my old Xbox. Playing through this made me eerily nostalgic, wishing for the old times that are never going to come back. There will never be a time in my life ever again that I have as few responsibilities as I did at this time. Never again will I be able to hop on a Minecraft world and experience no stresses whatsoever except for the occasional creeper. As we get older, that childlike innocence that we used to have is one of those things that we will never get back. We've seen too much stuff going on in the world, and honestly, it's kind of impossible to remain innocent at an older age. So like I said, hopping on this was extremely refreshing. It gave me a new take and honestly, I'm gonna try to experience life differently over the next few months. 
I need to realize that we make memories every single day, and I need to experience life in the moment. I need to get off social media, get off my phone, and just enjoy my time alive. Back in the day, if I would have spent every waking minute while I was on these worlds multitasking and browsing Instagram and Snapchatting people, I don't think it would be the same effect today. I would have been so distracted by what was going on that I wouldn't have these fond memories of how amazing the world is. This video isn't scripted, and I'm kind of turning this into something else, but I feel like it needs to be said. Live life in the moment where you can experience the nostalgia in the future. Reminiscing on memories that you were actually there for are a lot better than reminiscing on vague memories where you were sitting on Instagram while you are at dinner with your relative who is now no longer around. I never thought that hopping on a Minecraft world would change my life perspective, but it kind of did. And I know it could be looked at as a little bit cringe to say these things, but I genuinely mean it. But I will say this was a lot of fun. I did really enjoy this. Oh, and a little side note, I found a bird and I brought him back with me and then he ran into a cactus. So I made another grave for uh, Dumbledork the second, <laughs> the new bird who is now dead in a cactus. So I, I apologize to the bird. It, it was kind of your fault for flying into it, but I did kind of bother you because you were just vibing and chilling. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see something else like this where I try this on other worlds or something along those lines. This was a bit of a long video, but like I said, it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Peace.